Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Business Warrior podcast. Today, we continue the mental series with systemization and marketing expert Rob Stewart. Now, would you agree that making consistent sales is the lifeblood of any business? Think about it. No sales, no business. Rob was instrumental to our business and its bottom line because he essentially built a mechanism which generated a crazy amount of warm leads, which then led to consistent sales. In this podcast, we talk about how he aligned himself with his Wealth Dynamics profile and how it has directly influenced the success of his business. He shares his AAA framework around building authority within your market and the importance of focusing on the relationship before proceeding to close the sale. Rob's contrarian approach to marketing, i.e. turning the funnel upside down, is an absolute game changer. Be sure to stay tuned until the end where he drops his free golden lessons learned in business which could save you years of pain. If you are in the expert space, this is one not to be missed. Sit back and enjoy. So Rob, welcome to the Business Warrior podcast. Thank you so much for being on the show. How are you doing? I'm very good. Absolute pleasure, Akash, and thanks for inviting me on. Oh, thank you. The pleasure's all mine, Rob. Rob, so for our listeners, could you just tell us a bit about who is Rob Stewart? Uh, yeah, great question. So, um, look, I, I came into business after 12 years in the military. So I was a uh, fast jet pilot in the Air Force, flew tornadoes up in Scotland, then came out and uh, became an instructor on the Hawk, uh, where I taught people basically to, um, uh, to uh, you know, break other people's stuff for four years before going out to South Africa to, to teach them to do exactly the same on a new airplane. Now, when I got to South Africa, I decided it wasn't where I wanted to spend three years of my life. It's a long story. I'll buy a, you know, I'll tell you over a beer sometime. Um, and so decided to leave the Air Force to settle down. Um, I went into property, of all things, because when I left the Air Force, I was trying to get a job in the airlines, uh, sort of, you know, flying for British Airways, something like that, and couldn't. So I went into property. My father-in-law had a small portfolio um, and, and ended up building a property portfolio in the Northwest. After that, I uh, went into a, a property training company to, to, or created a property training company to give something different to the market, which is kind of the route that, that launched me onto what I do now, which is helping other sort of experts, coaches and trainers create their own businesses. Fantastic, Rob. Uh, and just for the listeners, I'll give a bit more context. So I've known Rob for about five years. I first met him at uh, one of his systemization courses, which was absolutely fantastic. And to anyone watching, I mean, I know he's got the videos out there. And we actually engaged him through a, a property sourcing company that I used to work with. Rob, do you just want to tell us a bit about kind of what the core offering was there and what, how you helped our company Yes, I remember it well. Do you know what? You were one of our first uh, done-for-you clients back in the day. I remember meeting you just outside. Um, it was Houston Station, wasn't it? Uh, yes. In a, in a cafe there. So, so at the time, uh, what we what I was doing is I created an agency, and effectively, what we're doing is creating creating consistent, and predictable lead flow for for businesses, and effectively setting up the systems part of that. So, um, sort of advertising into follow-up systems. To, to give the client, to give you a, you know, sort of flow of leads who are, who are pre-qualified, pre-framed, ready to get on the phone with you and hopefully then hand over to you to convert to become paying customers, customers or clients. So we were doing it on a done for you basis uh, and uh, sort of I was building that up as an agency model. And, and that's how we got going with V Media Global, which is the current business that I run. And, and it was really great working with you. I mean, this is why I always talk about the importance of having mentors or importance of having people who've done this before who are experts in the field. I mean, I'll just give you quick snapshots. Before we worked with Rob, the business was making quite sporadic cash flow. It was quite inconsistent. You know, we were just going through peaks and troughs. It just wasn't a pipeline systemized business working with rob and his company by the end of it we'd achieve some great results you know where we were making sales of between two and three maybe sporadically we got to a point where we're making five consistently and it's that consistency part that really made a difference to our business so when it comes to kind of marketing understanding your audience you know rob and his agency are definitely the one to talk to and we'll go into that a bit more detail, but I just did want to pre-frame this meeting about where Rob and his agency and their skill sets come into it. And that, it's a really important thing, like, you know, just to sort of delve deeper into that point. What most entrepreneurs do when they get started in business is they kind of rely on hope marketing, i.e., you know, sporadically putting out content or calls to action or you know, going to networking. 
um, events. And that's great and it works. And when you get started, you've got to put a little bit of sweat equity in. But what gets you to, you know, sort of five figures in terms of sales, those strategies are not the things that are going to push you forward and make a proper business. And unless you've got that consistent flow of business coming in that you can look in your diary and go, right, in the next 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, I, I know, you know, um, pretty much based statistically what is going to come in, then you don't have a real business and you're always going to be in that hustle mode. And I call it hope marketing and hope marketing is not a strategy to build a business on. Fantastic. I hope you guys got that down. I hope you made a note of that for your golden nuggets. So Rob, I'm just going to delve slightly deeper into just how you got started. So, you know, you were a fighter pilot. It should be good to understand how you kind of change your career from that into property. And again, why you changed that. I'm more interested in the, the rationale that kind of mm-hmm. took you to the person you are now. Yeah, well, I mean, to be honest, it was tough. So, as I said, I found myself in South Africa, uh, up on the Zimbabwe border, a place called Louis Trickard. Um, and it, it wasn't the most, well, it was a slightly hostile environment, let's say that, for, for an Englishman living up there. So, I thought it was time for a change. And I always said about the military, when, you know, when the juice isn't worth the squeeze, i.e. when the enjoyment I had flying aircraft in the military was outweighed by the, by the lifestyle, it was time to change. And that's a concept I've always been, um, you know, sort of, always latched onto that you know when there's a change that needs to be made in your life and when things aren't you know aren't going well or you're not happy and you're not content not connected to what's going on in your life you have to you look at if you're on the right path and i think a lot of people go down a path that they think i have to go down this path right because uh, for whatever reason i remember when i was running property education group one of the i sat around a mastermind table with our mastermind clients and i asked one of my students who wasn't getting brilliant results at the time said why are you doing this why are you actually doing this strategy and he said well i, I paid the grand to be on a course and i'm like i'm like that is not a good reason to dedicate years of your life down a route that you're not happy with and so we changed you know we helped him change direction so after i left the military i've got to be honest i didn't know what to do the military or leave Leaving the military did not prepare me at all well for civilian life. And, and so I kind of just set off by myself, but realized very quickly that I needed help to do it. So I actually enrolled in training of my own um, in the property space. And they helped me, that, that training company helped me, you know, sort of build a, build a portfolio. Very quickly, I realized that that effect, I, I went through this property training and it was great, but I felt there was better, tra- I, I felt there's a better service to be given to people in the same situation. And, and whilst there's a lot of cool stuff out there about you know how to make money in property or even you know when you look in the market as a whole there's a lot of cool things about how to make money online and, and tactics and ways of doing that there's not an awful lot of people that help you build a business and actually build a proper business and that's really what you need to be doing because i spent five years teaching other people in the air force in fairly high you know high pressure high performance environments i wanted to do the same and I wanted to take that that training sort of skills I learned in the military and transform it into a training business to help people set up businesses in the right way. So that's what we did with Property Education Group, which is the first training company. It focused on creating a systemized property business that you could actually scale. So you could sort of, you know, attract, uh, attract finance, attract deals, put the systems in there, create a team that you could grow. So that was that was the transition out of the military into into training. Awesome. And then I know you were working, I guess, in property education, but then you decided to go solo. So was that kind of understanding your, yourself, knowing what you liked a bit more? What took you to that kind of step? Mm, totally. So again, I, we, we, myself and my business partner, a chap called JP, a good friend of mine, we ran property education group about two years and we did, we did really well. We did about half a million pounds worth of sales in those, in those first two, two years with a very high net profit margin, probably on about 80, 85% net profit margin because we, we ran it from home. But I found myself not engaged with the process, if I'm honest. I found myself at a, at a conflict of identity. One of the high performance tools I, I teach my clients is something called the hierarchy of hierarchy of identity. And um, a lot of people talk quite glibly about finding your why and finding finding your purpose. And almost inevitably, most people say, well, that's great. I know I need a why, I need a purpose, but I have no idea what it is. Okay. Mm. Now, there's a stepping stone approach we can use to help that. And it starts off by understanding what we want our life to look like. So it's creating a life by design. You know, you might want to create a lifestyle business, which is six-figure profit, and you can you have full mobility and choice to do whatever you want. Or you might want to create an international conglomerate with, you know, a thousand staff and, you know, tens of millions of pounds worth of turnover. There's no right or wrong. It's just what you want to do. 
Um, after you've done that, you need to know what value you can give to the world. And then you need to understand what you're connected to. And I think a lot of people do things, especially like, you know, in jobs or things like that, that they're not connected to emotionally, i.e., you know, they're just not feeling it that much. So you need to understand what you're emotionally connected to. And only when you do that, can you then sort of step up and go, right, what's my identity? So when I was running the property education group, there was a conflict of identity because I was trying to position myself as a property guy. And I kind of did some self-reflection and realized that actually my identity was a, was, a, was a trainer and a coach. And there were better ways that I could meet that identity rather than you know, running a property training company. Wow, fantastic. And I think, look, that, that segues quite well into to Wealth Dynamics because Wealth Dynamics is essentially what I'm focused around and Business Warriors focused around. And I've been through kind of, a, I guess, a similar journey in terms of just understanding who I am. I guess just for, you know, for a snapshot for the audience is my father came over from India as a lecturer. So his, one of his values was teaching education. Now, I wasn't very academically smart. So what he would projected on me was his values of education. So I effectively kind of grew up thinking I was a failure, not very good, because I was judging myself based on his projection. It was only till kind of 35 onwards that I thought, hang on a minute, maybe this isn't true. And I, and I started doing business and I started finding out that I'm okay at business. So I took a reflection point and looked at myself and said, well, look, maybe you're not a total failure. You do have value. And that's kind of where Wealth Dynamics helped me understand what my strengths and skill sets were. And I think the common thread here is that self-awareness and finding your why. So my why now is to try and help people understand what their strengths and weaknesses. It's about finding out what your strengths are, because when you understand your strengths, you add more value to people. You'll be in flow state more. So in terms of Wealth Dynamics, well, what profile are you? So um, I did Wealth Dynamics, blimey, probably about five years ago now. And I came out as a high mechanic, or my primary was mechanic, and followed shortly behind by creator. So um, yeah, mechanic, mechanic creator, which, which I know the two, the two often don't go together, actually, because it's very right, you know, left brain and right brain together. And that led me to creating the property education group, actually, which is all about that systemization, because I, I knew that I like systems. And so created a training business where we were helping people, you know, create systems in their business. It just sort of made sense to me. It's like, right, that's what I'm good at. So that's what I'm going to teach, right? Rather than just trying to teach a, a, a random strategy or tactic or something, something like that. So that, yeah, that, that, that wealth dynamics test directly led to the last five years worth of business that I've been doing. Exactly. And then if you look at, I guess, the value that you've added to people as a result of you aligning yourself to your, I guess it's more flow, right? Am mm. I right in saying it's flow for you when you're, yes, yes. when you're doing your mechanic stuff? Cause I've seen you at work with your mechanic stuff. You really, really get in there and you really tinker with the component parts. And again, I felt the value that you've given. It, it, it's about, you're right. It's absolutely about flow and you know, like mechanic, I know there's a lot of people who, who think, you know, it's a fate worse than death to go in and play around with systems and tinker and do all that sort of stuff. So self, you know, you, you mentioned self-awareness and I think that is so important because you have to build your business around what you're, what you're good at. What a lot of people do, right, is, is they, they go on social media and they see people who are on the face of it successful and they think, I, need, I want to be like that person, right? And they, they start modeling people. But there's often a conflict and you're modeling people that have different characteristics to you. So, you know, I know when I got started, um, the first thing I did my training, before I started my training business was, was went on a, um, a course on how to speak from stage. Because I thought, right, you know, all the big, all the big trainers, they all get on big stages, they fill big rooms out, and you know, they they do all this motivational stuff from stage. And although you know, I was absolutely fine at stage speaking because actually it's a system, so so it does lend itself to the mechanic. But you know, I wasn't a star, which is I know another another worth dynamics profile. Whereas those people who who are great on stage and are flow on stage, they're very much star profiles. So you know that puts them in flow. Whereas for me, the flow state is more you know sort of being in the background and when working on those systems, which is why I created my business to market and sell and run it purely online from you know from my from my bedroom rather than going around the stage circuit speaking from stage every week. So this is coming from someone who's really embraced his wealth dynamics profile and and understood what he's good at and what he's not good at. So absolutely fantastic. So let, let's talk about more some of the key concepts of your business. So how do you help businesses? What's your elevator pitch? Yeah. yeah so, so first of all, so I specialize in working in the expert space. 
So, so that's coaches, trainers, authors, speakers, um, service providers who monetize their expertise and their experience. So that's who I primarily primarily work with. And, and really what I do is I help people either start up or scale from five figures to that six figure, um, six figure mark by creating the systems and the foundational platforms to, to scale from. So I now do it very much in a training capacity. So we don't run the agency anymore because I found out that I could help people better by training than doing. And that's about, I think that's about getting buy-in from the client or the student because actually when you're growing your business, you need to be bought into it. And when somebody's doing it for you, you often don't have that same connection. And that's something that I found quite a lot as a, as a business owner, if somebody's just doing it for you. So I think it's much more powerful for the business owner to learn how to do it themselves rather than just have it all taken off their hands yeah okay fantastic so look that's the main concept let's start getting into a bit of the nuts and bolts about exactly how you help them achieve going from kind of five figures to six figures so what's the kind of space that you you mainly focus on is, is it marketing so if we could put like an umbrella over it, um, yeah. there's, there's several facets that sit underneath it. But yeah. fundamentally, the thing that's going to take you from that sort of startup or struggling one man band to a six figure business that's giving you sort of predictable and consistent sales and, and lead flow really is about creating you as an authority within your space. So something that I realized after, after I left the property education group and I started up V Media, I was very much focusing on systems and automation and all that sort of stuff. And I realized quite quickly that actually the key differentiator between those who have succeed and those who don't succeed is the relationship they have with their market. It's how they're perceived by their market. So you can have all the coolest systems in the world, all the funkiest websites in the world. You can have the most awesome products in the world, but if people don't trust you then they're not going to do business with you. And when you really boil it down, right, there's, there's only two things that you need, to, you, you need to do. You need to have an offer that somebody wants and you need to have a market that wants it. And if you can find the two of those, right, but then in the middle of that, stick your authority so your market trusts you to use your offer, then you're going to have a successful business. So it's about creating that authority through various mechanisms. Okay. All right. So what do you see that people are doing at the moment that's just kind of not doing it correctly, as it were, the mistakes that people are making? Yeah. So um, I think when, when a lot of people start their business, they, they think the best way to do it is go out and sort of put sweat, sweat equity, which actually is it's not the worst thing in the world when you're starting to get some momentum. But as I say, it's not the thing that's going to, to propel you forward. And right now, the, the biggest thing that I see in the markets is that um, social media platforms are changing hugely. So, you know, when I got started five years ago, you could, you could post a few things on social media and make loads of money organically because you had loads of reach. But what's happening in the, uh, with the platforms is that they're, they're throttling organic reach. So therefore, a lot of people are not getting the visibility that they think they should do or they think they're going to. So a lot of people are constrained by, um, with, with visibility. And the other thing that people do wrong is they forget the key part or a key part of this process by understanding what the market wants and how we need to frame that message message to the market. So what a lot of people do is they launch and they just start almost going to sort of conversion mode or sales mode. And they sort of talk a lot about their products, their programs, and almost trying to sell the whole time rather than lead the market through a process of awareness to get them to the state that they want to work with you. So those are the two big things, mistakes I think people make. Wow. And you talked about this education platform that you've now created. So what kind of key principles does, does that teach or how does that help this entrepreneur who's been making a mistake and how does that take him to kind of to the point where he's really starting to get a grasp of this? He's really starting to make his audience aware and he's bridging that gap. Mm. So there's, there's two key models I want to talk about, if that's all right, um, on, the, on the podcast. The, the first is called the AAA method, which is um, it, it, it's a framework. And I, I want to really stress this. It's a framework. It's not like a step by step. This is exactly what you need to do to be successful because that just doesn't exist. So it's a framework that anybody can use in their business, sort of plug it in. And then we'll talk about how to implement it in a sec to, to go through that process. So funny old thing, there's three elements to it. Three A's, awareness, authority, automation. So an important concept here is that everybody in your market is at different stages of awareness, okay? The majority of people don't actually know what their real problem is right now. A few people, let's say sort of 10, 15, 20% know what their problem is and they're looking for a solution. What most service providers or most coaches and trainers do is they go and hit those people, those sort of 15% who are looking for a solution, they go and hit them. And therefore there's a lot of noise in that sector of the market trying to sell stuff to them, those people. 
what I advise everybody to do is, is step back a couple of steps, right? And we need to start talking to people who are not actually aware they've got a problem in the first place. And we need to do something called bridging the pain to problem gap, okay? So everybody's got a pain. Generally, it boils down to a lack of money, a lack of time, or a conflict in some form of relationship, uh, you know, business or personal. What we need to do is get, take that pain, which is what people feel on a daily basis, and then lead our market to understand what the real problem is. Let me give you an example. So let's say your, your pain is you have no money, and you've got no money because you've got no clients. And because you've got no clients, you're then hustling to get to networking events to bring more clients in. So you've got no time either, right? Which is probably going to put a strain on your personal relationship as well because you've got no money, you've got no time. And, uh, you know, your other half is probably not appreciating what's going on. So that's the pain you feel on a daily basis. But that's the, that's the effect, not the cause. So if you look at the cause, the cause is you don't have a predictable and consistent way to generate sort of pre-frames and highly relevant leads into your business. So what we need to do is when we sort of bridge from that pain to the problem, your market go, comes to something called the point of illumination where they go, aha, okay, I now understand that I need a system to bring in leads consistently and predictably. And they start then looking for a solution. Okay. So when they start looking for a solution, we can then make people aware of our solution and us. So that's the awareness stage that we need to take people through first. After we've gone through that awareness phase, we then need to build authority with these people. Because there's no point bringing them to that point of illumination. They go, I need, I know what I need to do to fix this. And they look at you and they're like, no, no, I don't trust this person. And then they go and use your competitors. That's not a good use of your time. So we can build that authority through three main things, association, demonstration, and uh, education. And the big thing with authority building these days is to do those things consistently. And I think what most people do is they think consistently means flogging social media and posting 10, 15 times. I, look, I saw somebody who, um, who, who sort of teaches LinkedIn training and, and, and she was saying that you need to post 30 times a day on social media to get traction. And I heard that and I almost wanted to cry. So I'm like, I couldn't think of anything that would make me more miserable than trying to post 30 times a day on social media. You know, like once a day is hard enough, let alone 30. That's nuts. <laughs> it's, it's nuts, right? But you do see it. You do see people doing it, like just posting, posting, posting. That's not cool. It's not a good use of any of your time because it means you're not focusing on your business. You're like a worker bee in your business. So what we then do is we loop around to the third day, which is automation, and we create the systems, which mean you don't have to do that because when you systemize this, we can effectively build audiences using various techniques on social media. We can create a relationship with those audiences using sort of various techniques to make sure our message gets in front of them on a daily basis um, and then attract them and send them to become sort of paying clients and customers with us. So we automate that whole process. And when you have all those three things together, that's when you amplify whatever your business model is. So it's key that we use all of those three things because if you've got two of them or one of them, it's not going to work properly. Great. Well, wow. that is a lot of value right there for the listeners and i think whether you are a, a coach or someone trying to influence people every business needs to set themselves out as an authority no yeah absolutely it's the when you look at those that are successful versus those that are not there's one thing that differentiates and that's the relationship that the market has with them it's nothing to do with the product it's nothing to do with you know how much you shout it's nothing to do with you know anything else other than the trust that people have in you and that's created through this process and that authority and, and consistently doing it. I mean, you, you know, even I'm slowing down right now because I'm trying to assimilate everything and making sure because, you know, everyone goes in straight for, I guess it's like, you know, trying to get someone to bed on the, the first date, you know, <laughs> they don't take the time to, to get to know the person. And I think, you know, again, I'm, I'm guilty of this. And Samir, my wife, who tries to help me, you know, she tries to kind of push through the concepts that you're saying is, you know, take time to, to nurture them, inform them. So awesome. Was that both the points that you wanted to make? Or well, was that so, like yeah, does that, that, I mean, that's the, that, that's the main model. We obviously then have to be able to implement it in real yeah. life. And, and interestingly, I can actually say, um, you know, th th there's always this perception that we want to speak things along, right? And we don't want to take the time to nurture, or it takes a long, you know, it takes a long time to nurture. The key thing with when we talk about implementing it now, which I'm about to, I'm about to um, sort of talk through the, the method to do that, it doesn't have to take a long time at all. And this is what's really exciting about modern social media. And this is what I would say 99.99% of people don't understand or don't understand how to use the platforms to do this. We can accelerate that whole process 
by using the tools that are available to us in a very strategic way. And it's all about everything we put out. So everything we put out can pre-frame this process. So we can bring those people through that awareness process and that authority building process in a matter of days, right? It doesn't have to be weeks, months, years. To do that, we use something called the value ecosystem. Now, I, I don't want to talk too technically here because I know it's a podcast and people are, people are listening and maybe driving and don't want to you know, have people trying to write stuff down and crash. But generically, when people market, they, they, they do something called funnel marketing. I, I'm sure you're aware of the term, which is you put a load of cold traffic, whether you're sort of working with sweat equity to get it in or you're paying for ads to get it in at the top of the funnel. And then they drop out as they go down your sales process. And at the end, you've got a, a paying client or customer, right? That's how it's been done since marketing was invented. The problem is it's a very inefficient process and it's a sales process rather than a, rather than a nurture process, right? So you're really trying to sell something. So what we've done is we've turned that upside down and called it the value ecosystem. So rather than spending loads of time and loads of money getting loads of cold traffic in the top, what we do is at the top, in the narrow end, we put in only very highly relevant and very highly engaged audiences. Okay, And then as they come into your upside down funnel, they kind of go into this lovely space where they just loop around getting um, loads of value from you. And when we use the, the methods we use on things like Facebook, for example, we can just control the exact narrative that goes to those individuals. So we can very, very quickly go through a, a, a narrative that takes them through awareness, through authority in a matter of days for almost no money at all. It's literally we're talking pennies to get this messaging in front of those people. So we're really focusing on the right people, which is why we need to understand who the right people are in the first place. We're really focusing on that. And uh, it, it's a really effective system of getting people reaching out to you to then work with you going forward. Well, and that's completely kind of, again, switched the mind frame of people because how I've always done marketing is, you know, you're putting lots of content out there and you're, you're slowly narrowing people down while they're in your funnel to the point where you, you get to the point where you're kind of pre-qualifying uh, midway through down to the end. And you're saying just pre-qualify them highly at the top. They come through. Again, I guess it's about nurturing that database, right? Yeah, I mean, look, let, let me give you an example. And, and the great thing about doing this is you don't need complex tech. You don't need to be a tech wizard. You don't need loads of money to do it. You, you basically need a Facebook account and a smartphone. Let, let's say you put out a video. Okay. And your video goes through the building blocks of content and the messaging structures that, that, that we teach. So it effectively pre-frames everything that you do. So if somebody's watching that video, they, at the end of that video, they're pre-framed. They know what you do. They know, well, they know what their problem is. They know what your process is. You've started to build authority with them. Okay. So if they've stayed to watch that video, you know, they're a relevant, a relevant lead. Okay. It's not cold traffic anymore. Now, somebody who watches that video, we can now set up the back end systems so that every day we now put a different piece of content into their newsfeed, leading them through that, that thought process. And, you know, let's say they watch one video seven days later, we can actually put two pieces a day into their newsfeed. They might've seen 14 pieces of content, value-based content, educational content, authority building content, including calls to action. And they very quickly sort of, well, you accelerate this, is the whole point of why my program is called the authority accelerator. You accelerate that authority building process in front of them. And again, I don't want to go too deep, but there's a psychological pro process. If you go and read Cialdini's book, Presuasion, I know a lot of people have re read Cialdini's book, Influence. He's got a, a follow-up book called Presuasion, which leverages a concept that says, what is focal is causal. And effectively, our brains do this funny thing. When, when they focus on something and they see it consistently, the brain will shut itself off to unrelated concepts and sort of laser in on that concept. And effectively, when it sees it consistently, the brain suddenly associates what it's looking at as something that has the ability to create create cause, so cause and effect, right? So by looking, by by getting in front of people on a, on a regular basis, so a couple of times a day or every day, the brain is focusing on that and it goes, oh my gosh, I'm seeing this person over and over and over again. I'm focusing on it. Therefore, I now associate this individual with the ability to make things happen. And it's a very, very strong psychological bond that it makes. And, you know, pre-suasion pre is, you know, we're, we're doing this before somebody's even reached out and spoken to you on the phone. Or, or, you know, met you in person or come to an event or whatever your sales, you know, your sales uh, event is. By the time somebody meets you, right, they, they know you already. They've, they've got that bond. You've created that intrinsic value and they want to work with you. So sales kind of goes out the window because you're not selling anything anymore. You're effectively just leading people in a process to come and work with you.
Wow. Wow. Incredible. And I understand that you're writing a book. Is that right, Rob? <laughs> I am. Yeah, it's written. So it's written. It's with the editors. We've just had the first edit back, um, which is looking, looking quite nice. So that's called authority. Funny old thing. Um, <laughs> and, and effectively it details how to do all of this. So it goes through the AAA method. It goes through how to build out the ecosystem, the five steps of building out the ecosystem. And it's designed for, for anybody who, who, you know, sort of monetizes their knowledge and experience to be able to take those concepts and put it into their own business. Fantastic. So we've got a book coming out. I just want to get some clarity because I want to understand for myself as well. In terms of your service that you offer, mm. so again, I, you know, Business Warrior is a, a coaching. Um, what service do you provide? It, it, it's training, right? And is that, how does that work? Can you tell us a bit more about the service and how that works? Yeah, absolutely. So, so I've changed it to, to purely training now. My, my core program is called the Authority Accelerator. It's a 90-day transformational program. So it's designed for people who have not done any of this before or are or trying to sort of market themselves and they're sort of struggling a little bit, maybe stuck in that sort of five-figure grind, which I know a lot, of, um, a lot of people are. And over 90 days, what we do is we go through four phases of, of setting or building the foundations over four phases. So after those 90 days, you're then primed to scale to six figures plus in the next 12 months. So the first thing we do is we go through your messaging and your models. So we, we create something called a power message, which is something that's going to resonate with your market um, and help them get over any objections and sort of self-limiting beliefs they have as to why they, they you know, are not going to get the results you talk about, as well as create your unique frameworks and decommoditize you to raise your intrinsic value. The other thing we do in that first phase is make sure your delivery model, whether it's, you know, whether you're selling a product program or you're a service provider is optimized for scale. Because what a lot of people do is they have the wrong delivery model, which means you can't scale. So there's no point getting a load of leads coming your way if you can't, if you can't service them. So, so it's important that we're scaling an asset, not a liability. So that's the first phase. The second phase is we then work on building your authority and accelerating your authority using various building blocks of content. Um, that we walk you through. The third phase is building out your value ecosystem. So you've got an end-to-end -end ecosystem ready to put those leads in. And then the fourth phase is turning on the traffic, getting people in both with organic and paid for techniques to generate that consistency of lead flow who are ascending to become clients. So we do that over a 90 day period. At the end of the 90 days, it's all set up and running. And then after that, I work with my clients on something called an inner circle, which carries on growing, promoting, optimizing it. Fantastic, Rob. Uh, that's, that's really amazing. And again, guys, I can't speak highly enough of Rob. I've worked with him directly and I've seen the results that it's uh, created for me. So um, I would definitely recommend checking it out and the book because I'm really excited about checking out the book. I always love reading and taking the details and seeing how I can implement it. Awesome. So let's just kind of move on to the final phase of this, Rob. Now, if you kind of met yourself in the past or, you know, you know, the kind of people who listen to this are kind of self-development orientated, what three key business lessons learned would, would you give? So, so number one, I think we need a whole other podcast uh, to answer that question. So there, there are just so many. And look, what I, I think something that's key to, to point out, actually, that's all right. right? It, 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 it's easy to come on something like a podcast and say how to do it and how everything's rosy, right? Forgetting all the... All the wrong turns that have been made, you know, to get to this position. And, and trust me, there have been some huge, massive wrong turns that have had serious impact on, on, on my life personally and professionally. And something that's really important is to have resilience to get through those wrong turns and to go through those bad times. And everybody, I don't care who you are, everybody goes through tough times and goes through a dip. And I, I think having that sort of mental resilience to push through is something that's super important. But if I could, if I could boil it down into three main things that I would, tell everybody who's just getting out or you know uh, sort of you know progressing at the moment to be this number one is simplicity okay so keep it simple as entrepreneurs we have this thing called the entrepreneur's curse right where we want to go and start up all these different things and we see all these different opportunities and therefore a year in you've got six limited companies going and three sole trader accounts right and you are a busy fool at that stage and I know that because I was there. And three years ago, it almost, it almost put me under, if I'm honest, with all the different things. And one of them went badly and impacted everything else. Okay, so simplicity is everything. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of ways of making a million quid. You only need to do one of them, right? That's all you need to do. Do one of them and be the best at it. 
So simplicity is the first thing. And I, I know most people will not take that piece of advice and then set up loads of things, get it wrong, and then realize, actually, we need to simplify. And it's a process we go through. But please just, please just keep it simple if we can. The second thing, and this is, this is maybe a bit controversial, right? Because I know everybody wants to, wants to push on. But I would say don't get ahead of yourself in business. I think it's easy to start and sort of we visualize that that state of, you know, big business or big profits, but there's a roadmap to get there. Okay. And it's a step-by-step process. And sometimes, and look, I know there's this big thing about 10X and all of that sort of stuff. And that's, you know, it's quite a big buzzword and going around the industry is 10X. I think a lot of people misunderstand that and think, right, we're just going to go so deep so quickly but what that what you don't have when you do that is you don't have the experience you don't have the understanding how to get out of tough situations and my advice is have a long term aspirational vision and this is what i i think is meant by 10x is have that long term vision where you where you're going to get there but then have the building blocks and i do a 90 day goal setting um, cycle so a quarterly goal setting cycle which are my stepping stones to get there and it's 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 lovely you know looking at these super yachts and traveling but you've got to get there first right and if you try and get ahead of yourself you forget about what you should be doing right now and that's when things can start to go bad because you still have a business to run on an operational level so think about where you want to go right visualize that and then work out the little building blocks that are going to get you there and execute on those little building blocks because if you don't you won't get there so that's the second piece of advice and the third piece of advice and this really is everything is focus on cash flow. <laughs> um, if I could say anything, it's focus on cash flow, whether you're in property, whether you're a coach or a trainer, whether you're, you know, e-commerce, if you run out of cash, right, life becomes miserable. And it's so easy to do, right? It's so easy to overcommit. So I always say that everybody, you know, I say simplicity, you should have two business models, one that focuses on cash flow and one that focuses on wealth building or asset building, which is more of an investment. So your cash flow is your trading, your trading business model. For me, it's training. Okay, and that generates my cash flow. That then gets reinvested back into my asset building, which is my property portfolio. And yes, over time, your property portfolio will give you cash flow as well. What a lot of people do is they just go dive straight into, hey, look, I'm going to go and develop a 60 flat development in, in the middle of a city. Okay. And they realize 18 months in that they're bankrupt. You know, even if this is all, everything's running on rails, they run out of money, they haven't lived their life um, and, and it's miserable. So focus on cash flow. Brilliant. Those are my three things. Simplicity, don't get ahead of yourself, cash flow. Brilliant. Again, some really wide words. I was just taking notes there myself, actually. Rob, thank you so much. I think there's a lot going on there, a lot for our listeners to take away. And again, like Rob said, it's all about the information you take and how you execute. So Rob, in terms of your book or or in general, where can we, firstly, where can we find you? So um, look, if you want to connect, Facebook, I, I love connecting on Facebook. I probably hit those friends limits on my personal profile. So go to Robert Stewart on Facebook and, and follow me there and you get all the resources. If you want to dive on to a training, go to www.authorityclass.com. Okay, that's, that's a sort of a 60 minute deep dive training on everything we've talked about. Also, it's going to, it's going to connect you to me on Facebook as well uh, by Messenger. So you can always get me there and, and just chat about stuff on Messenger. And I always like to reply and sort of engage. Or the website's um, www.robstuartglobal.com. So, so one of those and you'll be able to find me. Brilliant. And then when the book comes out, where would we be able to find that? Yeah, it's a great question. I need to, I need to um, understand that. It'll be on Amazon. <laughs> if, um, if, you're connect- if we're connected, uh, if you go to authorityclass.com and you connect with me there, because part of the process is we connect on Messenger and it, and it is me. So uh, as I said, feel free to do it. If we're connected there, right, that is, that is my, pr- my main way of sort of distributing content is, is through Facebook Messenger because it's just a much better platform to do it. So if you go to the authorityclass.com and connect there, I will tell you about it when we launch it. Brilliant. Rob, thank you so much. Thank you for so much for being on the Business Warrior Podcast. Like I said, there's some great nuggets. I was taking notes. I wish you the very best of luck. Thank you once again. Absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to the Business Warrior Podcast. If you liked it, click subscribe or share, and we look forward to seeing you next time.